Hey everybody, Mr. MathLog here. This is a model with arithmetic sequence. I'm going to call arithmetic sequence AS. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at uh, MrMathLog.com. Okay, so if you guys get a chance, would you guys click like as you're going along in these videos? It helps encourage me uh, to keep making these. So let's get started. So if watermelons cost $6.50 each, then the total cost in dollars of N watermelons can be found using the function cost of N, C of N, is 650 times N, the number of watermelons. Okay, so complete the table of values for 1, 2, 3, and 4 watermelons. So 1 watermelon is 650, 2 watermelons is 650 plus 650, or $13 plus 650 plus 650. So there's the cost of 1, 2, 3, and 4 watermelons. So what is the common difference? The common difference is 650. Okay, so uh, we just kept adding 650 to all that. What does N represent? N represents the number of watermelons right here. What are the dependent and independent variables? Okay, so the, the, the cost, the total cost totally depends on how many watermelons there are. So the cost, which is C of N, is dependent and the number of watermelons is independent. So N is independent, C of N. Find C of 7. Well, we can just keep going, plus 6.5, plus 6.5, plus 6.5, or we can plug in 6.5 right there. And that's what I would do, and that's what your textbook and your teacher would probably like you to do. So we just multiply 6.5 times 7, and that value represents the cost of 7 watermelons, 45.50. Okay, what uh, domain values make sense for C of N equals 6.5N in the last situation? Well, any whole numbers that are greater than 1. We're not going to buy any fraction watermelons. We're not going to buy 0 watermelons. So, uh, did I say greater than 1? Greater than 0. Okay, so any whole numbers are counting numbers. So, let's construct an explicit rule for the fun in function notation for the arithmetic sequence represented in the table. We'll interpret the meaning of the specific term of the sequence in the given context. Okay, here we go. This table shows the cost in dollars of postage per ounce of letter. Okay, so here's the number of ounces in. So one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, four ounce, and the total cost, F of N. So this is the cost of one ounce. This is the cost of two ounce. Notice this looks like plus 20 cents. Plus 20 cents, 75 cents plus 20 cents is 95 cents. So, so uh, determine the value of f of 9. Okay, we'll get our formula and then do f of 9. This is our ninth term, or this is going to be our cost of 9 ounces right here and tell what, what it represents. It's going to represent the cost of 9 ounces. Okay, so D is 20 cents, okay, and our first term is 35 cents right there. Okay, so our formula, make this your friend, you guys. F of N is your first term plus D times N minus 1. So we just plugged in our first term, 35 cents, our D right there. Now we're going to plug in F of 9. So 9, so nine is going to be N. So I'm just going to abri uh, take shortcut right here. 9 minus 1 is 8. So this is going to become 35 cents plus 20 times 8 because 9 minus 1 right there, okay? So 20 times 8, 20 cents times 8 is $1.60. So $1.60 plus 35 is $1.95 right there. So that represents uh, the cost of postage for a 9-ounce uh, letter is $1.95. Okay. So this table shows the cumulative total interest paid in dollars on a loan after each month. So one month is um, uh, $160. Bucks, two months is uh, $230. Three months is $300. So it looks like it's going uh, plus 70, plus 70, plus 70 right here. These two are easy to see, plus 70. Can you see that? You just pick any two to get uh, what D is. D is going to be 70. Okay, here's the first term, 160 right here. So we're going to determine uh, the 20th term. So that's going to be the total cost after 20 months. Uh, and that's what it's going to represent. So there's D. 70, I would have picked these two. These two are easy to see. 370 minus 300 is 70. Okay, and our first term is 160. So don't forget, there's our friend right there. Okay, our uh, F of N equals the first term plus D times N minus 1. So plug that in, and there it is. So now we're going to find the 20th term. So it's going to be uh, 20 minus 1 right there, which is 19 right there, and 70 times 19. Uh, I did that earlier, is uh, 1,330, so add the 160, and we get 1,490. So what does that represent? Well, that represents uh, the cumulative total interest paid after 20 months is uh, $1,490, okay? So construct an explicit rule and function notation for the arithmetic sequence represented in the graph and use it to solve the problem. Okay, so here we go. DeAndre collects feathered 
uh, feather pins. The graph shows the number of feather pins DeAndre has collected over time in weeks. So here's our time right here. So this is one week, two week, three week, four week, five week, six weeks. So he only went up to four weeks right here. According to this pattern, how many feather pins will he have collected after 12 weeks? Okay, so here's our N, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then here's our um, F of N, 18, 37, 56, 35, okay? So represent that. There we go. Those are those numbers right here. So the common difference in, in our first term, here's our first term right here, and our common difference, we're just subtract these two. I'll take these two small guys right here. So it looks like 19 is going to be our common difference right there. There's D, and the first term is that. So plug it into our formula right there, and we get that right there. All right, so now we're going to plug in 12. So um, uh, plug in 12 for N. So 12 minus 1 gives us this 11 right here. So 19 times 11 is 209. And then we've got to add that first term, and so we get 227. So what does that mean? That means that this pattern continues. Uh, DeAndre will have 227 feather pins in 12 weeks. All right. All right. Let's try one more here. So Eric collects stamps. The graph shows it's the same kind of problem, you guys. The number of stamps Eric has collected over time in months. According to this pattern, how many stamps will he have collected in 10 months? Okay, so we're going to complete the table. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, all the x values. So the f of n is our y values, 20, 33, 46, 59 right there. Okay, and then so D is uh, pick any two numbers. These two are easy enough. We get 13, and then the first term is that 20. So plug them into our formula, and we get that. And then we're looking for F of 10. So F of 10, when we plug in 10 minus 1, that's where this 9 came from right there. There's the first term, 20. So 13 times 9 is going to be 117. So plus that 20 is 137. So if this pattern continues, Eric will have collected 137 stamps in 10 months. All right. So how do you know the variable is the independent? Uh, which variable is the independent variable? Which variable is the dependent variable in real-world situations involving these uh, arithmetic sequences? So the independent variable indicates uh, the term that is being used in the sequence. So it will usually increase by 1. So the other variable has a constant difference between the consecutive terms. So when you subtract, you get a constant difference. So uh, the independent variable are always increasing by one, and the other one is going to be the constant difference. All right, if you are in my class, I'm going to assign you guys that for your homework. Take care, you guys. Hope you're having a fantastic year.